there are differences in how we observe landings on floor from a safety perspective versus yeah. other events? Sure. Yeah. I don't think there's a ton of difference. Um, I think it definitely gets a little bit harder to see where it lines because of the step out, right? So like, because they're allowed to step out, sometimes you're seeing people, as, as you all know, right? I was a gymnast, you're a gymnast, they're trying to sell it. They're trying to make sure it looks, it's not controlled sometimes, but they're trying to land. And I think that the automatic step out, sometimes people are going directly to that. So it's almost like they don't really land fully before they step out right away. I think forward and back sometimes. And obviously my, my coaching hat thinks one thing and like my proper landing pattern thinks the other, you know, medical side. So I don't think there's too much more that you would be like super interpretive of. I think it's easier with men's obviously, because they're trying to stick cold. Right. And I think that's something that makes it challenging. Right. In, the, in your guy's situation is like a, a cold stick of a double back versus a stuck. And then a step out is like, I don't know how you all interpret that differently, but the step out makes it easier in one sense, but it makes it harder in one sense because they don't really have a full landing sometimes before they're moving on to something else right so that's and then you add in dance and choreography and all that kind of stuff and it gets it gets a little bit more blurry but i generally teach the same thing as i do on the other events on front and back i'm just trying to really show the athletes what ideally is going to happen which is like the squat like the squat just needs to show up in terms of a safety point of view because out of all the things i showed you guys last week and the two weeks before that concept known as uh, it's fancier term but angular displacement which essentially means your hips and knee joints bend like you have to have from an open position to a closed position, that's how muscles work. That's how muscles are active during that process. If it stays open and it's stiff, or if they land like shallow rotated and there's nowhere to bend, those are both really problematic because there's no way for the muscles to help out. It's just like joints, right? So the the, the things that I was showing on bars, those two examples that I had, one is she, she lands stiff and doesn't really move more. And that's where like a lot of ACL tears happens. But there were all other examples I probably could have shown where people um, were landing closed and there was no more room to close further, you know, besides like sitting all the way deep. So that's kind of what I think the literature supports is, is relatively open, which in the coaching mind is finish your skill, don't under rotate, right? Like actually show control, break on a half twist or on a forward twist is be ready for the landing. And then you sink into a squat. So there was one landing on floor I was going to include in the last lecture and she lands really far off one side, but she's really she's under rotated like her chest is really far down the reason i thought about using it is because you can see how much of an impact it has on her lower body you see her like really off to one side and her knee kind of jolts in so those are the super scary ones but from a coaching point of view it's the same thing that you'd want to not have happen right because you want to finish your skill you want to open up and present and then land fully so yeah sorry for a long-winded answer there but I, I don't think it's that much different i just think we do want to encourage someone to land control then step not like did it did it like the college salute where they step and turn right away because that's not landing properly either right the the very quick bounce off of the side turn and salute is that's not safe that's that's just like really high impact all right so i'm going to share my screen because we spent some time talking about these diagrams yeah. And there was a couple of different interpretations of those. Yeah. So that's probably my fault for not um, being clear enough of that. There are two parallels, right? There's parallel lines, which is shin to trunk angle, which is what you see in the top right hand corner. The reason that is, is because the 45 degree angles, when they continue to squat, if you have those lines stay relatively the same, it spreads the force across the most possible things, right? There's so, so high of forces that you want to use everything you possibly have to reduce the risk. And if you are very upright and those lines intersect, it's, it's a massive amount of knee stress. And we see a lot of ACL tears happen there and that very upright, very shallow knee bend, which was the example I used. I think she did a half and half out and I, she had a very quick little stiff knee bend. The reason for that is because it puts a lot of stress on your knee, vice versa. From a coaching point of view, a gymnastics point of view, if you under rotate your half and half out and you land the other way and you're really under, that's a ton of stress on your back right? And it's, it's equally as not safe. So we'd like to see 45 degree angles parallel, right? When they squat and throughout that, there'll be a little forward sway. And I think um, this was a hard one for me to kind of try to battle back my, my mind. There's a difference in my mind between landing and some forward sway of the trunk, but there's no excessive movement, or I think you guys would call it additional movement, right? They land and they have like an arm swing or they, they wobble back and forth. 
I think the difference between landing and allowing some natural chest motion and landing up on the balls of their toes and they kind of wiggle their chest all around and they settle back into their heels. So I view that first one as land with some forward sway as they squat as, as super normal and almost it's impossible to not move your chest a little bit when you land because your center of mass is shifting versus I view the deduction would be land balls of the toes chest moves to pull the heels back or vice versa they're leaning off to one side they pull themselves back to center that in my mind would be a deduction I think most coaches would agree with that so that's kind of the first shelf of the parallel lines and then on the other issue of parallel to depth so the I think the reason this comes up into confusion is where you would imagine the line coming from right so in the in the medical literature and I didn't want to go into this because of the complexity, right? But when you look at the medical literature, it's the midpoint of the femur up to their butt, the side butt bone, right? And that is in the middle of their hip. And when someone squats the parallel, that that's what we're referencing is actually the hip bone, the femur bone and the ball, the femur is sinking to parallel with the knee, right? And obviously, if you have someone who has really developed hamstrings and has a really developed, you know, glute, for example, they're going to look like they hit the bottom of their thigh will hit parallel way before their their actual leg is fully in parallel does that make sense so it does, but that was really fast so if you can do it one yeah more it's okay yeah maybe i mean i can i can show this right i can demo yeah. this with better is more if i squat to parallel like here right i'm at parallel with the bottom of my hamstring in relation to my knee right yeah. so the bottom of my hamstring is at parallel with my knee Mm -hmm. But like, you can see how like, this is my bottom of my hamstring. If I judged it by this, the bottom of my butt muscle is on my knee. So it looks above parallel, right? In the medical literature, it's the middle of the femur bone, which is in the middle of my hip. This bone is right on the outside of my hip. So that has to be able to go all the way down to be in line with my knee. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So it's, it's quite a bit deeper, right? So say you have an athlete who's very strong, very long, you know, muscular legs and she lands, she's going to look like she goes slightly below parallel. I would say that itself is probably okay. The, the hamstring muscle itself and the quad muscle with a 30 degree initial knee bend, there's a there's co-contraction between those two, which protects the ACL. The more you sink into that additional 50 degrees from 30 to 50 from the hip joint, that is continued really, really high activity of the, the butt muscles, the thigh muscles, the hamstring muscles. If you don't have that extra down to straight parallel, you're probably not going to get the most muscle activity to help. So I, if I was a judge trying to look at that, I would probably be okay with the hamstring or the bottom of the buttock muscle going slightly below quote parallel, right? Because that's going to be in relation of the hip joint to the knee joint, not someone who's really strong and has, has a larger hamstring that's going down. And I think the angles of research studies are taken from um, force plates and are taken from sensors that are put on the athlete's joints, right? So it's not around the bottom of the muscle, it's where the joint is in relationship to another joint. That picture that you have up, that one-tenth deduction right there, that is the femur joint, the hip joint, completely parallel to the knee joint. And that would be like where we kind of want to allow an acceptable squat depth to. Anything lower than that, um, I would say is, is when you start to get into hot water. Kyla's is a really good example. So see how her hamstring, because she's strong, is below the knee joint, right? It's down here. It's this line to this. But her hip joint in relation to her knee joint is, is slightly even above parallel, just a little bit. So she, I would say she probably has a, like, she'll sink like a little bit more probably before she comes back up. And obviously this is a one and a half landing, so it's more exaggerated. But like this to me is like a textbook good example, right? Like she has pretty good squat depth right there. I would say lower like her hip joint is here, which I could draw, but I can't. Her hip joint is here, but her knee joint is right in front. That's like a, maybe like a, a hair above parallel, right? Just a hair. And so that for me, I took that on a purpose because she's coming from a one and a half. So it's easier to find that position. But at the same time, if somebody were doing say, I don't know, a front handspring full as a dismount, right? Or something like that. Um, you would want to see the same position of squat depth to parallel. And I think it, it comes in more when people are doing half and half outs off bars where they're landing forward because they're obviously traveling forward gainered, but they're landing up and down. So you'd want to see the same, like that side angle in the forward, um, forward landing, her chest would be more forward. But that is kind of, for me, is like anything past that, I'm like, okay, you just screwed your scale up and you're just under rotated, you know? And I, th I think you do see that, right? So say, I mean, just, it, it is what it is, right? Someone with different uh, body, body length or dimensions, if they're really slim and slender, it's going to look like they hit parallel way earlier than someone 
or way later, forgive me, than Tyla, who's a very strong athlete. So that's kind of that's kind of her lowest point of the squat right there. So in this one, I would argue at this depth, one of these two, she's the lowest, right? And this is an example, right? So that that angle that I draw, that green angle, is from her femur joint, her hip joint, her yes. femur, her, her core. So you can see how it's still slightly a downward angle to her knee, right? It's not completely parallel, but if you were judging that from like her hamstring or where her, her butt depth is, you would say maybe she's, she's skirting the line of being too deep. If we see the outside of their hip, like if you're looking from the side and you can visibly see it's below the knee, like, and for me, if the top of her thigh starts to hit her knee joint line, it's so fast. I know then I'm starting to say that's a deduction. That's a low landing, right? But from the bottom or the midpoint of her thigh, getting to parallel, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be that concerned for me, a deep landing is someone who is clearly over squatting because they under rotated their skill. I think there's a difference in my mind between lands controlled squats comes back up and arguably lands low to start and goes lower and almost touches their butt on the ground. You know, that's where my mind differentiates it as like a former athlete and a coach. I think in my mind, there's a difference between land control squat to depth, come back up and like, <laughs> you know, under rotate splat, you, you squat super deep down. There is another area that had a question and said, how low is too low for safety purposes? On floor, given that they're coming out of the air out of these incredibly yeah. powerful skills, uh, is there anything else we should be looking for in terms of just safety? Yeah. So again, this one is, is challenging. If this is a still shot, right? And you just see someone who, if they were to land in contact with the floor at this angle, they're going to go farther down, right? Their chest is going to drop more. Like you have to be stupidly strong to not move from that position. So I would say this is concerning more so because one, their hands are behind them, right? Their arms aren't like out in front to stabilize, but two is that they're, you can see they're not in squat depth. So if this person landed here and kind of stayed here, I agree the chest is going to go too low. But if this person had their arms in front of them and then squatted down, it's, it's probably just that normal little bit of, of chest sway that's going to happen, right? Like it's so hard to maintain because the angle you would want is, is slightly more 45 chest up and the knees bending more, right? To make that angle more comfortable. But right now what's going to happen is she's going to hit the floor and just go blah, blah, and like whap down. And it's going to really hurt her back quite a bit probably. And she's going to under rotate. But if she had landed in upright slightly 45 and there was some normal chest sway and she started to squat with that chest sway, I, that would be ideal. You know, that'd be, that'd be ideal. I think anything past here, particularly with her knees being so locked is going to be concerning. But if she was upright 45, like I think that hashtag mark kind of angle is what I'm looking for all the time is 45 degrees, a little bit of a chest sway, but as their hips are going into parallel, if it stays like this and the chest just moves down, that's 100% of deduction. And the one on the right is, Clearly, you just kind of squeeze the Thank you much. I don't think from a chest angle point of view, that's, that's, that's concerning for me. I think that, again, that's a lack of squat depth. She's like, her feet aren't apart. She's not squatting after she does it. And that's the exact thing I was talking about before. She's stepping out right away where like, I like to see her feet apart, absorb more of a squat, stand up and then step upon the ascent of her squat not like she's still coming down and she almost steps out as she's still absorbing force that's the that's the problematic stuff so yeah chest angle wise i, I it's like that's very tough but that's that's probably for me if i'm erring on the side of safety i wouldn't be concerned for that yeah i think if we're trying to lean the conversation angle wise towards the window of safety right it's going to be i mean you'd make the arguments it's, it's like 35 to 55 degrees of chest lean Right. That's for me in my mind is where I start to get concerned outside that. Right. It's like 45 degrees. We want everyone to land at like 45 degrees ish and squat and maintain that. But if they're slightly above and, and upright because they open their skill well, not super concerning. If they're slightly below because they're moving into that as they squat, that's another thing. If they're very upright at 90 or so, or they're very below, you know, like 70, 80, 90, that's when it gets really sketchy. Um, and so I think that middle gray window area of like, 45 but swaying a little bit like again swaying while you're landing and controlling is different than you land you're clearly off balance and you change your chest angle a lot and you move after your feet have landed and tried to control with the additional movement but i think for her she's like she's she's pretty good in that kind of like gray zone mm, yeah that one's definitely that, like yeah, that's definitely low. 
Yeah. So that, that's the more problematic thing is that because she's under rotated and she didn't have enough time, she didn't have time to open up and, and f- like, she have to get out of the tuck, open up to get to an open hip angle. We want to see a 30 degree knee angle is that the knee angle. We want to see a relatively open hip, but then a 30 degree knee angle when she lands. And she's definitely, you know, a little sketched out around that. But, but the other thing about this too, that you can tell it's, it's more of a concerning deduction is she's not like her back is rounding because the force is getting her. You know what I mean? Like she's really curled over and you can also see it too. Like when I look at the angles, I'm looking at the shoulder and the chest position re- relative to the hip. Just this athlete is her chest and shoulder angle is, is like 20 degrees more pitched forward because she's under rotated. So she not only lands really low chested, she's leaning over to one side, but there's other athletes that you watch in college gymnastics. They look like they squat really, really well. But if you slow-mo them, their knees go whack really fast together. It's called a valgus twitch. And that's where ACL tears happen. So in this girl, she hits the floor and because she's under rotated and she's leaning on one side, you can see the spring floors bounce the force through her knees and she buckles inward. Then she hops to her other leg. This one's definitely too low. And this is the other thing I was trying to drive the point home to is the reason people bounce and the reason people take steps and the reason people hop all over the place is because they're not using the, the safest way possible to land, which is the most muscle muscles possible to land. So when Kyla and Maggie were like 10, 10, 10, stick, 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 it's because they're landing in a way that uses the most muscles possible. When this girl under rotates and she doesn't open it up in time, doesn't get the hip and knee angle open. She has nowhere to bend. Like that's what I was saying. She's already bent. So there's no way for the muscles to help out. That's why she hops all over the place. So yeah, I would say if we're talking safety point of view, we'd want to see her squat a little bit deeper. And then see, the thing is, is it in order to get a vertical up and down, it has to be a more vertical takeoff. Like if, I, if you're doing a full or a Rudy to stick, you need a much more vertical up and down to absorb into it. Versus if someone's doing like a really traveling long, low front full, it's like they're like skitching to stop, right? It's like a, it's like a skid mark almost. So I think this is a, an issue of, We'd like this athlete to travel higher so she's coming up and down and can show control in a squat when she lands versus just like she she spits her front full very far forward. If I was teaching her to land a little bit safer, I'd want her to put her feet hip width apart a little bit more, squat to depth a little bit more, and I'd want to see her not have so much of a, a backward trunk lean. I'd want it to be a little bit more far forward with a more vertical up and down for the layout. Yeah. So upon, upon initial impact, she's, she's really close. Her hip angle is really close. And again, I I would agree. This is a body posture deduction. And again, I think maybe that's the clarification point for coaches is like, you're trying to get someone who's clearly under rotated and it's not there. Maybe it's more on the amplitude side of making that deduction than the body posture deduction, because someone can land in 45 degrees, but be really under rotated and be sandwiched into the ground. (laughs) You know, that's, that's a height problem. That's not a, that's not an angle problem, but yeah, for her, the point of contact, she's already like pitched over and she kind of pulls her chest up really fast as, cause as her knees buckle, it, it spits her chest upward, which is not good. <laughs> That's very different than someone who's controlling and then on the way back up is opening their hip and their chest angle to be vertical, to just show control. You know, she's, she's not choosing to do that. <laughs> That's happening because the force is going through her. I'm wondering though, as I hear Dave talk, if maybe more of this is an opening issue. I would agree is, is it, can can it be an amplitude issue and a um, opening issue? You know, if if you're not, you don't have amplitude and you don't show control of skill, you're clearly not going to have the power to open and find your landing. And I think again, why Kyla's amazing is because you see her, when you watch her from the front, she has a huge block, one and a half open break, see the floor, hips are open, separate the legs. She lands fully complete, right? Other one and a half that are real sketchy is kind of a half block, they pull their arms in early, they're still in a crunch when they come around, they never break, they never see the floor, and they get rocked by the landing. So I think it's, I don't know whether that's an amplitude deduction and an opening deduction, but I think those result in someone who squats real low or has their chest really low under rotated. One of the comments that I usually will tell people is like, when they land in their initial landing, 
did she have to step or did she choose to step? Sure. Yeah. And you can see how her amplitude and her speed, and a lot of times when they're landing, their shoulders are continuing to move backwards. Right. They weren't in control. So they had to step. So we have to take it versus like the first girl who looked like she came out, she landed upright very quickly, but then stepped back in control. Right. And so a lot of our deductions, I think, on those things are the control at the end. I really like focusing on the angles of the shin angle and the chest angle, because I think that's going to help us a lot in the future. Yep. I definitely agree because the shin angle, shin trunk angle for me as a medical provider is like my home base. That's like what I'm trying to teach people to, to squat well for. But I think the other piece on, you made a really good point on the step is when the step occurs, right? Like in a couple of those videos, they were still landing. They're still absorbing force and they have no choice but to take a step. Like you said, because you can see the forces are greater than they can handle because they're off yes. take a step back versus um, the girl in the beginning, she squatted and as she was standing up, she took a step back after that. So I think maybe that's another back of the envelope test is if someone steps on the way through their absorption versus is standing back up and absorbs and stands forward or backwards, that's probably a little bit more, you know, easy to go on. It's very helpful. Oh, I'm happy that I can help. I'm, I'm flattered that I can even be in the conversation. <laughs>